Hi everybody, I wanted to give you a quick intro to the MySQL portion of this course. So we've done a little PHP. Um, we'll be doing it frequently, but remember this course is basically about the database. This should set you up for our entire curriculum and the LAMP stack environment we hope you will be masters of. Anyway, I've got, uh, I've got MAMP going here. I'm on Mac. A lot of you have XAMPP going on. But we both have the same situation. We have localhost. And I'm going to open that up and start her running. And this is where I get all the files that I have from students and all you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and type in PHP my admin. Whoops, helps if I spell right. Anyway, um, you see it looping. And immediately I get to the GUI. Now, what you might want to know is that in XAMPP, if you go to like the homepage of XAMPP or MAMP, you should see a couple of things. You should see um, uh, the PHP info that we already understand, um, but you should see PHP MyAdmin somewhere as well. Um, I'm going to actually do a control F and try to find it here. And it can be administered with PHP MyAdmin. So the admin itself, usually they give you a link, but almost always it's in PHP my admin and sometimes you might see it spelled like this my admin like that and you see it delivers to this this page so this is your GUI and this is the content for this week so for this week you should know everything about chapter 4 and you can leave any angst or anxiety about PHP behind just for this week uh, and starting next week we're going to be um, you know, querying the database, getting values, inserting, etc. But for now, let's get to get used to this GUI. And what you see on my left panel here is all of my databases. I have a final 166 for Mesa College WebD 166 class. That's its own database. And up top, you see localhost and the database name. So I can close that up. And here I see information schema, which is pretty interesting. And these things are all the um, settings for my database. And if I go down to MySQL, you're going to see a few things. Important uh, is the user right here. And I'm going to make this smaller and move it over so we can actually click on it. So if I click on user, you see columns and indexes. But you can see, um, if I click browse, now you see the database MySQL and the table user. And this is actually where I hold my usernames and passwords. So on a Mac, your database username will be root and root, actually. This is the encryption for root. And these are all the privileges, and you see Ys across the board, meaning that I have privileges for everything. Now, if you go to um, the PC with XAMPP, your username will be root, but your password will be blank. So if you want to have an experiment, just look at your user table inside PHP My Admin on XAMPP. And you might see a blank here or the encryption for blank. But regardless, when we get into connecting with our databases, this will be imperative because you'll need to connect. Anyway, um, not so important right now. We'll get to that at some point. Oh, this is our table structure for uh, our e-commerce course at Mesa. And it's uh, and at Mesa, we have our own e-commerce cart. So this is it. And we may touch on that later. But if you t ever take uh, e-commerce at Mesa College, you'll get to know that uh, that database structure quite well. Anyway, now that we're here, I can go ahead and uh, create a new table. I can do that by clicking on uh, localhost. So right here, we see um, localhost, and I see databases, and I can even create a new database if I wanted to. So let's call this webd153. And our collation's interesting. I usually use Latin, Swedish, case insensitive. Um, let's see if we can find it here. Here it is right here. And the underscore CI is what's important about this. It means that when we search for something, we can search for something with a case insensitivity. So if I were to search for a cat and it had capital C-A-T, I could type in C-A-T small case and it would find that value. So I would say of all things, Latin, Swedish has the, high, the most character sets, the most uh, Think, uh, think of uh, accents on a word or uh, uberbratens or things like that. Latin Swedish CI is pretty encompassing. 
I have done a, uh, a Vietnamese website at one point, and it was it was quite interesting because I had to use uh, a Vietnamese character set. But for now, use Latin Swedish CI. Anyway, so now we have this this database. So this is a database. Maybe I'll use it all all term. And now I can create a um, a table and let's call it students. And this number of students could be something like four columns. And I'm going to go ahead and click go. Okay, so let's start our student table. And initially I'm going to give it what's called an ID. These names can be whatever you want, but I recommend you make them something that you can remember, something that describes the data well. And the data type on this will be integer. And our length, our length is interesting. If I put a 5 here, it doesn't mean that I can have up to uh, the numeral 5. It means I can have 5 digits. So that means that I could keep up to um, 99,999 values. So that's the length of the number of digits. Now, as we go across here, you see a default. And we see as defined null or current timestamp. I'm going to select null. We've already selected our collation for the entire database, so that'll trickle down. And I have attributes. Well, our attributes are going not going to be unsigned, binary, unsigned, zero, full, or current kind timestamp. I'm going to keep them as is. But what's important is I am going to give this a primary key auto increment. And what that is is an index. And our text talks about it quite well. But I'm also going to click auto increment. So that means when we make an insert, this will be automatically assigned a value, a value that's an integer. And on each insert after, it will be automatically incremented, meaning the first record will be 1, the second will be 2, the third will be equal to 3. And if I were to delete 3, the next one would be 4. So we'll be doing this constantly, so don't worry too much. This is just an overview. But now it's time to go into my um, other fields. So let's give it uh, a first name. Now I have this as uh, Pascal casing, meaning the first digit is capitalized, and variable character. You're going to see in the book that there's a couple of options for variable characters. One is char and one is varchar. Well, because we have variable lengths on this first name, I could be named Bob or Steve, uh, we don't know yet, I would want it to be variable. If we knew what the, what the uh, value was coming in, we would rather have it be char. So if I knew that the value was going to, going to be male every time, I would put char 4. But with variable character, we have a length of 255, and it will truncate after the, the name is inserted. So truncate simply means that it's going to stop right at the name. So if I put in the word Steve, it's only going to carve five characters out of memory. So that's all I need for this field. And then I can do last name, and we'll make him Varchar as well. And I'm making it the full length, which is 255. If you ever wanted longer, you could use text which is about 65,000 characters. But these are just small amounts of data. So I'll do first name, last name, varchar 255. And then I can do something like program. So let's say we're in web development or computer science or even fashion design. Well, this can be our program, and it'll be 255. Now, later on, I'm going to give you a, a list of uh, keywords that are not allowed in SQL. So if you, these are words like descending and, and varchar and things that are part of the database language. And you would never want your field names to be equal to those. Anyway, so let's say program and now let's say student number. So I'm going to call this student number. This will be integer. And this can be something like 10. 10 digits long. Great. So now I have this and my storage engine is one of these these four. Or these uh, seven. There are many options. I, I prefer keeping it at InnoDB, the default, but I have used MyISAM before. Um, the difference is how the storage is kept, and there's very very little you need to worry about at this point because you're just focusing on, focusing on the most simple languages. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, you can click on Preview SQL and it'll show you the insert statement, but I'm actually going to go ahead and save this table. And guess what? I have a table now. And the beauty of this is I can click on Browse, and by the way, MySQL is the database itself. SQL is the language. So when you see select all from students here, that is SQL. That is the, the structured query language. So 
I can click on stru stru structure, excuse me, and I can see all my tables. I can um, produce SQL queries inside this interface. I can search for something. I can insert or export or import and even change my privileges. But for now, let's keep it simple. I'm going to do a simple insert. So let's say I'm the first student and it's Chris Secor. My program would be WebD and my student number might be something like this. I can click go. Now what you see right here is an insert statement. It says insert into students ID, first name, last name, program, student number, values null, Chris Secor WebD and my student number. If I click browse you can see that I have a one here. Now I never inserted one. Let's insert another one. I'll do Tom Smith and his program can be computer science and we'll give him a student number as well. Click go. Now I have two students in my database. Great. You can edit these, you can copy these and delete these, but every time you work with the GUI it'll teach you the query that you made. Structured query language. For example, if I, sleep, if I select delete here, watch what happens. It says, do you really want to execute delete from students where students ID equals two? That's the actual SQL statement. No, I don't. So basically, what we need to do moving forward is to learn all the data types that these uh, fields hold and be able to export and import them. But more importantly, on the web side, we need to actually use PHP to show all my listings and allow people to edit them or delete them etc. So this is our storage and um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do one thing real quick and I'm going to actually export this. So if I click export, I can do quick display with all the minimal options, click go, and there's my export. And what will happen is I can actually copy and paste this. I can select all and copy. And when I go back to my database 153, I could actually drop table students. Drop table students. Cool. I click drop table students and guess what? I just deleted my database. And now there's no tables found. So I can click on SQL now and paste what I just copied, which says basically create table students uh, and add the data. And I can click go. And guess what? My database is back with the table students with browse and my data is still there. So that's an entry level look at PHP MyAdmin. Um, we'll be having numerous videos about this specific GUI and other GUIs in the future. That's graphical user interface. But for now, I would ask you to get acclimated to what you see in front of you here.